Oh, Kingdom Come Deliverance, the breakout hit of 2018. In February of the year, the medieval first-person simulation hit the scene for Warhorse Studios. Their first IP, but it was not their first rodeo. The whole team made up of experienced developers, and it definitely caught the gaming community by storm. But this calls out for the question, will there be another one? When are we getting it? And more importantly, what's going to be in it? This is my wish list for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. First off, many of you be wondering, wait, are we even getting a second Kingdom Come Deliverance? Now, of course, nothing has been confirmed right now, but it's looking pretty promising. Go and check out the Sexy Biscuit YouTube channel, who's been doing a ton of research and snooping around the Warhorse Studios pages to try and find as much information as possible, and it's looking like it could be coming at some point. Warhorse Studios have already stated that they're working on another project. That's no secret. The mocap guys have been hard at work, and we've had some hints that they've been using medieval weaponry. What else could they be working on? Let's be honest here. Furthermore, there's talk of this being on an entirely new engine. Talk of rewriting code for this new version of possibly CryEngine, which the first one was developed on, but it looks like what they had with CryEngine wasn't sustainable for a game in 2021 or 2022, depending on when we get any sort of information about it. You see, CryEngine's been around for quite some time. It's been around for over a decade. Coming out in 2009, CryEngine had this mythical persona. It was the engine for beautiful looking games. The Crisis games were based on it, and now Kingdom Come Deliverance got its chance to shine with it in 2018. But it's old now. They've got to work on something new. Maybe it's a newer version of CryEngine, but I guess we're going to find out. But hey, with all this talk about a new Kingdom Come Deliverance game, I just wanted to get an idea of what people actually wanted for the new installment. So I put out some messages. I asked people what their most requested features are for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, so let's get straight into it. First of all, I think the main thing that most people want are just large-scale battles. You see, the first Kingdom Come had some issues. Bugs and glitches aside, people enjoyed the core game, but there was one main residing complaint. Where are the big battles? We saw trailers with these massive battles, and when we got into the game, it turns out it was just cutscenes. There was even demos from earlier bits of gameplay in Kingdom Come Deliverance where you were actually playing in these massive battles, but we never actually got them when we played in the game itself. The best we got were some bandit skirmishes and then a siege at the end where you had, what, 30, 40 men. It wasn't a large scale battle that we thought we were going to get in that game. If that can make a return in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, indicating with a new engine, meaning it's definitely possible. I mean, we saw the difference in engines when it came to games like Mountain Blade. Bannerlord having up to a thousand troops unmodded compared to the 150 of Warband. Completely new engines, meaning they're able to get way more troops in at all times. I'd love to see some sort of sieges. We got a siege of Townberg and we got some bandit camp sieges and they're incredible, especially the nighttime siege at the bandit camp using fire arrows. It looked so immersive, but they weren't quite on the big scale. Now we know, spoilers ahead, that Henry and Hans Capon are heading towards the capital. They're going to ask for help to go and help against the invading army. Maybe we're going to get some much bigger, much larger armies clashing there. Furthermore, siege weaponry would be a fantastic addition. Of course, one of the missions in the previous game is to build a trebuchet. It's the only real mention that we get of siege weaponry, and we don't even get to use it properly. So having some sort of siege weaponry that we're actually able to use as a character would be awesome. Additionally onto this, having some troops that we can actually command. I mean, Henry started off as a blacksmith's son. He started off as a nobody, but now he's made his way up the ranks. He's made his name for himself throughout the missions that we played in the First Kingdom Come Deliverance. Now Radzig and Capon and all the higher nobles know who he is. He is the son of a noble. So maybe he'll get a higher position in the army, maybe even a captain rank, and therefore we might see some sort of troop commanding. Which seems like it will be the obvious next step up from the gameplay style that we saw in the first. Something a little bit different and kind of the opposite of the large battles are stealth missions. Kingdom Come had some alright stealth. It wasn't fantastic, but you kind of got to see it when you went hunting. It was important to use then. You could have different equipment 
equipment and weapons and of course different clothes and shoes even to make you more stealthy in certain areas but I don't think we got enough of it I'd love to go even more in depth and have more missions looking at this new mechanic that we've seen in plenty of games but they're always third person games like Assassin's Creed and Hitman it's rare that we get some great stealth mechanics in a first person game I would say the only ones that really do it well are Dishonored and Thief maybe Kingdom Come Deliverance as it has a very similar gameplay style can move into those ranks but what about the story? Well, as I said, at the end of Kingdom Come Deliverance 1, Hans Capon and Henry are heading towards the capital. They're going to go and ask for help because there are massive invading armies that could prove to be a little bit difficult to fight with just the armies that are stationed in Taunberg and Rattay at the moment. With this, it looks like we're probably going to get some introductions of new characters. Some of the architecture and the models that we're going to see are going to be way beyond anything in the first installment in the series. But I think maybe the story need something else. I know Kingdom Come Deliverance has its name as a first person medieval almost simulation game. The story is very linear, it's written out very carefully and whilst it's not breaking bad, it's still an incredibly well structured path for you and your character to go along and it almost feels like the characters you interact and the things you do on the way throughout your missions really feel like they actually have some meaning. However, what if the story went a bit of a different way? What if instead of keeping this very solid linear storyline, we went a little bit more free? You had different choices that you could make, much more than we're in Kingdom Come Deliverance 1, where you could have different paths that you could go down that would have completely different results. Of course, some may completely disagree since this does very much change the style that KCD1 made for itself, but surely for storytelling it lets players be more in the RPG. I feel like KCD did something really strange. Strange. I mean, it was fantastic, but strange. It called itself a role-playing game because it had this very hardcore realistic role-playing factors when you were just free roaming. If you had mud on you, people wouldn't respect you as much, so you'd have to clean yourself. If you wanted to get good at sword fighting, you'd have to spend every day practicing sword fighting. If you wanted your relations with characters to go up, you'd have to make sure you see them often in order for them to start liking you. And in the free roam, the RPG was fantastic, but the story sort of just pushed that all out the window. It was very linear to the fact that you couldn't really roleplay since you were following the story of Henry. You weren't really making your own story. Now I don't want a sandbox experience where there is no storyline. That is not Kingdom Come. But what if you had some different choices that you could make? Some ways that you could change the storyline in order to fit the way you want to play? What if you don't want to do an all-out battle but you had the option to go and sneak into a castle? Of course, there were some missions like this in KCD1, but I think they can take it further. I think they can get more interesting and more intricate with these storylines and it would help develop characters. Maybe you can pick characters to come with you on certain quests that you might feel like they're fitted towards doing certain things. And it sounds wild and wacky but I feel like this is just something that would be awesome in the sequel to Kingdom Come. Whether you think it's a good idea or not, it's definitely an interesting one that I think would be important to explore. And finally, something that has been really bugging me since Kingdom Come came out. People were making videos on it left, right and centre. The player base was massive and Slowly but surely, as all single player games start to do, it started to die. The player base dropped off, people were saying the game was dead, and it was kind of sad. They brought out DLCs to kind of revive it a bit, and there were some cool storylines and new things like building villages. One of the massive talking points of the game at the time was modding. Everyone wanted mods, it was a game that was very susceptible to it because it felt a bit like Skyrim and it sort of offered itself open to changing the stories and the characters and the way it played. There were some reskins, I remember there was a Star Wars mod where you had lightsabers instead of swords but there was nothing that in depth, it was mostly bug fixes and a few different skins to your characters. There was talk of the Game of Thrones mod coming to Kingdom Come yet since it's been so long and we've heard very little in the past, is that even still going on? Maybe they should just wait till Kingdom Come 2. But this is why the problem really arose, because modding tools weren't in Kingdom Come when it was released. They came in months afterwards when people had kind of played the game. With a single player game, people of course are going to drop off, but if they've already dropped off, why would people want to start making mods for it months down the line? I feel like Kingdom Come 2, if it does come out and if it is planned, it needs modding tools from the get-go. They need to be there at the start because they need to get that community going. There was very little in the modern community for Kingdom Come 1 and I feel like this needs to change for the second one if they want to keep the game going and pushing from strength to strength. So Warhol Studios, I know it's a pain, but I think it's so important to get those modding tools in as soon as possible. But hey, that's just my idea. Do you think that they should bring in modding tools at the beginning or do they think they should do the same thing? Leave it as a very vanilla game, 
bring out the game that they intended and not do anything more with it. I don't know, please leave your comments down below, but thank you so much for everyone that replied to my questions and polls about this video, seeing what you wanted from the game. But if you have any other ideas, leave them down below and I'll make sure I get to them as soon as possible. Leave a like if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. Dislike it if you didn't, but I'll very much cry in a corner and I will send that video to you just to make you feel extra guilty. But until then, I will see you in the next one.